such like an incredible journey. I love that. Honestly, when you said you were going to summon angels, the only way you knew how, I thought you were going to pull an angels in the outfield moment. <laughs> Your method was far superior. <laughs> Up next, we have Amanda North. Amanda lives, writes, and teaches in Austin, Texas, though she was born and her heart resides in the border town of El Paso. Amanda is a lecturer in the English Department and Honors College at Texas State University. She has poems published or forthcoming in Columbia Poetry Review, The Open Bar at Tin House, The Learned Pig, and You Journal. Her favorite ice cream flavor is Rocky Road, mostly for the nostalgia. Welcome, Amanda. Thank you. Thank you. Y'all, I feel so cool to be a part of this. I've watched it from afar, and I just feel really special. Thank you for building this community and for keeping it going and thriving. I appreciate it. Um, so the first poem I'm going to read to you is in theme with the evening, being that uh, this is a event for women, women identified writers. And so I'm going to read you a poem about getting my period. Um, mm -hmm. And it's the poem that's going to be published in Columbia Poetry Review. Um, and then the next poem is the poem that gave me the title for my uh, first collection that I'm still in the fun hell of trying to get published. Um, and uh, it's called uh, The Morning Commute, and the title of my manuscript is We Are All Mad Here, so kind of a pull from the Mad Hatter. Pruning the garden. There it is, falling between your legs and open nightgown. That red-brained mucus letting go slow in the soft glow of early morning. A splash over the tile and your naked feet signaling no, not this month. A reminder that you are a single vessel in marred hollowness, unable to recreate like the peonies that ruffle and blush over the duplex garden with small velvet furls and fertile froth. No, not this month will the roses open their tight clasp of innards to reveal the width of their perfume, that sweet newness moments before the darkest red pushes herself toward daybreak. No, not this month will your belly stretch with seed towards the horizon as a round distillation of everything that can be written. Morning commute. There are days when we can fall in love with damn near anything, and others when we hate even the speck of dust left on the kitchen chandelier beyond anyone's grasp realistically, but you know all of this. Like the man wearing cowboy boots sweeping leaves off the public sidewalk at 7 a.m. as cars rush brushes up the hem of his cotton robe. Or the man at the bus stop standing next to a tattered sleeping bag and masturbating through his jean shorts. This is how we live, you and I. The simple give and take, a single moment when dust lumps together under the dining table. We are all mad here. And then these next three, kind of, I guess the angels are already here, so this is good. They're a reaction uh, to the Genesis myth. Um, and so the first one is about um, the, the story of Eve, the creation of Eve. Uh, the next one about the, uh, the soil, the sin uh, from Cain and Abel. And then the last is about Nephilim, and so um, I started teaching this course at Texas State called the Origins of Civilization. And uh, I'm just really uh, enthralled in the Abrahamic myths at um, the strict binary between losers and winners. And so as the stones say, I tend to have sympathy for the devil, right? So I feel a lot of sympathy for the losers in this myth. Um, and so I have, I have a, a long poem that I'm just gonna read some sections of and it's kind of a poetic play a different chorus of voices, um, and it's called And I Began. The Garden. Is her etymology the feminine of bone, the rib, a spear of the side flanked by flesh where blood flows inward when asked or demanded? Put to dream in dirt, then she is afterthought. To appear, disappear, reappear. Her skin of mud and bones of echo. He slept and had no say over the way her hair falls after the wind blows west, or the way her eyes redden during desert's high noon. He had no say over the blood she spills, her rib, her spear. 
Can this spirit be satisfied before it finds sunlight's end? Is her etymology the feminine of bone? Cain and Abel. <coughs> and all time passed, cosmos ruptured to burst blue light until she bore a second sun. Pleasure braided to function, her mouth of red, a fountain of spittle, labor pains hollow as dandelion stems, moan slithered through the garden like a prayer, a rattle in the cattails. One child to till the earth and another to tend to life that stood on four legs. Despite any act of giving, the spirit only desires treasures of the flesh, fatty secrets and a firstborn that guides the rest. Weak tops and bitter herbs only become empty hymns. Blood-filled bean pods until two suns became one, unknown to this spirit. Dirt of the field furled into fearful knots, all gods eventually demand justice. Dung beetles feed on mouths of righteous shepherds, while the cosmos ruptures orange to red to blue. Nephilim. He fell upon her, pushing her breasts deep into her heartbeat. Body of man, wings of heaven, legs of beast. He held a bag of stones and feathers in his right hand. As his breath brushed over her ear to collarbone and cadence, night let black slip through its fingers. Her neck was lily bright and long from searching. He knew she understood flight. Gently he placed his hunger inside her, leaving her with new perfection, feathers and fur. This next poem uh, is one that uh, I have published in the Open Bark Tin House. Um, it's about uh, loss, someone that uh, I love very much, and also a landscape that I love very much. Bloodline. The loneliest feeling, she said on a day when the sky was clear, is watching an airplane fly away. And in the middle of Valentine, Texas, a single machine men's railroad track and crack splinter form, while buzzards string red remains over gravel lanes. Before, she created still life with oil paint, and after, she drank while wrinkles set. The horizon is only purple mountains and lone windmills. When desolation surrounds, will it eventually entrap? A pecan orchard sits heavy on this desert land. If it is pollution that makes the sky shades of pink, then I want that inside my lungs. All dirt trails branch like veins into strangers' homes. We will finish alone. If creeks ever existed atop this sand, then each left with the Mexican wolves. Her mind fell westward with her spine, and she forgot our names. We try to reconcile our anger. Cacti survive droughts, then burst fuchsia flowers. What a hope. Could anyone do any better? And this next poem that I'm gonna read uh, is a reaction to uh, the Ars Poetica epistle from Horace. I'm always asking my students to write their theories on poetry in a poem. So the torture that I put them through, um, I figured I would do myself. Um, and it begins with a quote from that epistle. The great majority of us poets are misled by the appearance of right. Can you imagine standing in a field somewhere down Highway 10, sun-piercing scorpion tails locked into the fatty portion of the palm, while blue skies go on and on south, but hit the northern eyes of the mountain, sudden and heavy, in blue or purple? You are walking through a crop of maybe onions or cotton or tomatoes or alfalfa, but not corn, because then you couldn't focus on the weeds and the weeds are the heart of this meditation, aren't they always? Guilt swells as rain that rarely visits this part of the country. You can't begin to process pulling and pulling and kicking up dusk to lay this growth to the side, only to yellow and curl into clammed edges. This weed was something, and to grow here, to really grow here is special. To fight through sand and sun and many dry days but you are tasked to remove. If no one tends this crop, lets weeds grow and thrive, just imagine the rot in the air. 
I have never stood in a rotting field. I can't imagine the sadness that would fill my heart. Yet it is that one perfect part of the crop, that one leg of basil perfuming the hot air, or the plump tomato that you bite and taste sun, or the onion that whomps out of damp soil with a sound that could soften a dictator's heart as the onion mimics the cosmos, layers of self and knowledge, all glowing part by part, fractals in each slithery pull. That keeps hope alive. So you start to pull and deny life to each flimsy green stem of God knows what. You may even smile as you absently pull and tow away for more bites of sun or cosmos. You know you have tasted it before. But it will be a long time until you have yet to taste again. You will taste small moments of rot over and over until womp or rays of light fly over your tongue again. You will have to stand in a field of possible rot, impending, feeling the weight of the world at the bottom of your spine and let calluses form over each part of the fatty palm until that one moment that you will take in like an orgasm and then continue to fight through sun and dirt and death again and again and again. It's like a mantra during the publishing process to myself, right? But <laughs> to cheer myself up. <laughs> All right, and so the last poem I'll read uh, will uh, end as I started, right? As an homage to women writers. Um, this is a reaction to St. Vincent's new album. Uh, she's just so brilliant. She really inspired me, and she has a line uh, song, "How to Milk Our Young," like, "How to Milk Our Young," and so I just wrote this as a reaction to that. Pour out all your desires, honey and oil, on unmarked grave soil. Walk away. Let them chew on the bone jutting out of the back. Wings aren't necessary anymore. Set a lifetime in motion, step back, watch the wheel slow. Sometimes wine pours out the navel, turn into a triangle, the stomach to the ground, give it back. Let his hand rest over your mouth as you sleep, breathe slowly through the nose. Drink coffee each morning, tepid from rush, and sit in the sun to remember. After the shower, take your left hand and push the fatty edge over the reflected distillation. Find details you never knew you possessed and those that became someone else's. Hear a cry, tense shoulders, and call to attention, yours or hers, doesn't matter. We all must beckon. Let the sun rise for 10 days and only notice on the 11th. Let the sun set for a lifetime and keep pretending it never happened. Purple fading to rose is just pollution anyway. As you carve the pork ribs, don't think about your own tenderness. Think of all the mouths waiting. Pour pepper on your tongue and imagine it rain. Wait for your body to revolt. Thank you so much.